Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing a very, very basic Photoshop Merch by Amazon t-shirt design tutorial. Do you want more great content from me? Check out the description box down below. So this is going to be aimed at the more beginner, you know, someone who's maybe in tier 10 or tier 25, uh, maybe even more so just tier 10, uh, just to give you an idea of how to do a very, very basic design, how you can at least get a few shirts up, maybe price them a little bit competitively, get a few sales and hopefully tear up. So what you will need for this tutorial is Photoshop, that is the program I like, I like to use I, and I've chosen. So if you haven't got that, you are going to struggle to follow the tutorial. You can download it, you can go on, um, and you, well, just search Google for Photoshop, you'll find it quite easily. So what we've got here is a very, very basic design, zoologist, and then we've got a lion's head here that I've actually added a stroke to. So if I zoom in using the control and plus key, you can see I've just added this little white sort of rim here, which is called the stroke. Um, and that just gives it a little bit of elevation from the t-shirt itself. And in my next video, I'm actually going to be uploading this design. And when it's actually on the t-shirt, you'll understand what I mean by that kind of elevation from the t-shirt itself. It, it makes the design pop a little bit more. But anyway, so that's that. So how do we know that this design here is okay to upload? Obviously, Merch by Amazon, you always hear, is very stringent with their... Uh, copyright, trademark, all that sort of stuff, you know, image use, all that, all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to show you very quickly now uh, just what I kind of do, you know, I'm not saying this is the right way or the wrong way, it's just what I do personally. So when I've got a t-shirt design idea, I don't generally go ahead and straight away do it. Sometimes if I'm very confident that there aren't going to be trademarks, then, it, then I will do it and I'll check the trademarks afterwards and it's usually okay. But... If I um, have any single shred of doubt in my mind that one word in there or a phrase is going to be trademarked, I don't do the design first because basically it's just a time waste. So if you do the design and then you check the, check the trademarks, you, you basically just lost time because you have to scrap that design. Well, you don't have to scrap it. You could upload it to another uh, print-on-demand, uh, obviously, platform. But still, you know, you, you can't do it for merch. So... Anyway, so what I'm just going to type in here is obviously zoologist. Now, it's very, very unlikely that, like, just a single word will be trademarked. Sometimes it does come up on here that they are trademarked, and I generally stay away from them, even though a lot of other merch sellers, you know, have uploaded designs with those words in. Um, but I just like to stay away. You know, I'm just very, very strict with my trademarks. But as you can see here, we've just run a search, and it's just completed, and there's no data available. Now, I'll just run a another search to show you what you're kind of looking for so if I put in here like science fiction for example if we just like pop this up here oh well nothing's come up for that so I'm trying to think of something that will actually come up so if I put like uh what was something I was doing the other day maybe like love right so let's put like love love wins or something I don't know love wins that might be trademarked ah there we go so uh, it says here the status of this trademark is dead, so you don't need to worry about that. But if that had a little live green thing next to it, because the type is actually a text sort of trademark, I wouldn't use that. I mean, I'm sure there's people who upload these to Amazon and hopefully get away with it, but I wouldn't use that. Now, sometimes it'll say design in that little type, and then what you want to do is just click, quickly click in here and just see what, Usually there'll be like an image there of what the design looks like. Now, generally, if you're using commer commercial, free for commercial use text or designs, it shouldn't matter too much even if you're using the same words because that's just a copyrighted design style. And also, sometimes it'll say typeset here where it says type it'll say typeset and then it'll say live now that also of what i believe um is the same sort of thing so the, the actual font or the style of the the text is the issue not necessarily the text itself so sometimes you can actually get around that and you can upload design with you know even though it says uh, typeset copy uh, trademark on here you can still kind of get around that and i have actually successfully uploaded designs 
with that even though it said types that on here obviously you need to do a bit more research yourselves i'm not condoning that i'm not saying just follow my advice and do that obviously do a little bit more research but i use this site here you can always do a search on the uspto uh, and you just go down here to search trademark database and then you just search trademarks here and then basic word mark search and then type your phrase in there i don't know it could be anything love always or whatever obviously i've put in at some point um and then you can see here there's all these different trademarks it looks a bit confusing but basically you know you can see over here live and dead and if obviously if it's live and if it actually relates to clothing specifically like if you come down here i've just clicked into this one design plus words letters and or numbers sometimes it'll say like i don't know where it is it sometimes says i is it here ah Goods and services, adoption agencies, adoption services. If it says something like clothing on this page, then I wouldn't really do anything to do with that if you're doing that kind of uh, text, you know. So I, I would be a bit careful. But obviously, again, look into it a little bit more yourself. So, yeah, that's the basically the trademarks. But how do you know that your image and your text is okay and free for commercial use? Well, I use this site called 1001 Fonts. Now, you've got to be careful with this site. If we look at the right-hand corner here, you can see that we've got these little sort of uh, dollar tags here at the side. And some are red and some are green. Now, the red ones you actually can't use for commercial use. It's just for personal use. The green ones are fine for commercial use, so you're okay to use them. So it is quite simple once you know it, but it's quite easy, you know, just to ignore that or whatever, download the font and then use it. And, you know, I don't know whether they'd get rejected. I've never tried it, but obviously you could get into trouble further down the line. Uh, but you know you know what? They're probably just going to get rejected anyway when Amazon look into them. But, yeah, anyway, so don't use them. Use the green ones. Um, and basically, you can search for any different fonts in here. We've got like handwritten fonts. I'll just go on to a few of these. So handwritten, we've got um, formal. We've got like loads of different ones, like sci-fi fonts. I don't know, where, where's the sci-fi fonts? I'll just clear these out of here and then try and find that like sci- I think there's sci-fi or futuristic. Ah, futuristic down here. So you got all like futuristic fonts, so many different cool fonts. And then what you want to do is go on to a site called Pixabay. So P-I-X-A-B-A-Y, so Pixabay. And this is um, basically free for commercial use images. You have got to, be, got to be a bit careful on this website as well. I've seen some like superhero images and stuff that I wouldn't use. So just use your own better judgment and just make make sure that you're using ones that you definitely feel are free for commercial use. You know, if there's, sometimes you'll search and there'll be like a picture of Iron Man or something on here. Now, yes, it is on this website and maybe it is okay, but I wouldn't use that because it's too close, you know, it's too much of a close call for me. So, uh, yeah, you have got to be careful on this website. But, again, this website is called Pixabay, and this other one is called 1001 Font. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go search here, because I know the type of the font that we've used on this, um, on this design here is called Waver. So, I'm just going to type in Waver here. And we're just going to, hopefully it'll come up. There we go. So this is the font called Waver. That's what it looks like, as you can see. It's a, a match to that. Obviously, mine's a little bit bigger, but that's about it. Um, and you can see here over in the right-hand side, it is free for commercial use. So you just want to click on Download, and then obviously it'll download it. And then you want to go over to your documents and search. All I've done here on my documents is just run a search on my PC for actual waiver in this right-hand corner here. And then you will see the text come up. And usually it'll be the top result, but basically it'll be in this little, if you have like your icons on, uh, like medium or something, you'll see that it's this like little bit of font in this little notepad kind of thing, or little bit of paper. And then you want to click that, uh, yeah, right click that, that's what I'm trying to say. And then, oh no, not that one, is it that one? No, it's this one down here actually, I don't know why, I don't know why that one's not working, maybe that's a different... That might be a different file type or something, but it's this one down here. And then you'll see this install button here. You just want to click install. The text will then install. And then you can go over to Photoshop. And then you can basically, 
get a little bit of text. You know, you, you go over here to your little text tool in the left hand corner on this little toolbar type thing. And then you can select it from the list up here in the top left hand corner. You go down to, because it's all in like alphabetical order. So you go down to the W's and then you can see waiver here. And then you can type in zoologist. And as you can see, it's the same text, just a different color. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually just set up a new... Now I've told you a little bit about the copyright free and all that sort of stuff and trademark free. We're actually going to get on with the design now. So uh, if we open a new window, now I've got a little sort of custom setting here. Uh, what you want to do is basically put in these pixels here, 4,500 uh, in the width, 5,400 in the height, and then I've gone 300 in the resolution, and then you just want to click OK, and that'll open up a new template that fits the Amazon Merch upload requirements. So now what we want to do is obviously just put that text in there. Very, very simple, as you can see. Not a hard design at all. We want to then double click on the layer down here. So as you can see at the bottom right, if you're not too familiar with Photoshop, at the bottom right you get these layers that pop up and you can basically uh, you know, choose where the layers go. You can lap layers over one another so that then it'll give the appearance of something being uh, basically over another thing. So you could put like a little love heart in the center and then you could move that love heart layer below the text layer and then the text would appear above the love heart or inside the love heart basically. Um, but yeah, so we've got this little text layer. I want to double click on the text layer. And we've got all these different options now. We want to go down to color overlay, which I believe is like the seventh, sixth or seventh one down. So color overlay. And then we can choose the color just by clicking on this little color palette type thing here. And then I've, I've just chosen sort of this color. I don't know why. I've, I've, I've just gone down to uh, clicking this sort of like boldy color, I suppose. And then you can choose all these different colors. It'll change. It. You can go along here and choose blue and all the all these different colors. You know you know how to do this anyway, or it's fairly basic, so you shouldn't struggle too much. Uh, and then just click OK and then OK again. Now you could add a little bit of a stroke. So again, if you double click the layer and you go onto this layer style, you can add a little bit of a stroke to the text if you want. You could do black. Although I am actually going to do this. Um, on a black t-shirt anyway so I wouldn't go black if I was doing a stroke because it wouldn't really show up um, maybe you could go white maybe that would work I'm actually not going to do a stroke it might actually need a little bit of a stroke but I can always change that later uh, you know once I've just sort of uploaded it and seen it on the t-shirt on Amazon if I don't quite like how it looks I just come back into Photoshop add a little bit or change a little bit around uh, save the file again and then obviously uh, re-upload it and, and see how it looks then. So we've got this here. Uh, if you go back up here on the top left hand corner uh, to this little sort of move tool at the very top of this little toolbar, um, we can then move this text around. I'm just wondering what the, um, if we go back down to the text tool, I'm wondering what this is on. Yeah, that's on 200 points. So if you see up here in the in the sort of, uh, I don't know, well, it's not really the corner, but up here on the little bar up here is it, it tells me that it's actually on 200. So that's the size of the text. I'm just going to go back to this one and see what the text is on that one. Yeah, that's 200, so that's good. So we'll put that there. I think that's a fairly decent position for now. I might, yeah, about about there. Don't put it all the way up here because if you think about this design, basically the top of this design will be right near the collar. So you don't want that like right near the collar. You want it a bit further down like here sort of thing. That's just my own personal experience, how I like the design to look. Obviously, it's not necessarily just how you like the design to look. It's how your customers like it. Um, but I don't like it right way up there, and I don't think my customers would. So I kind of put it a little bit further down like here. That, that sort of feels about right to me. So then what we want to do, we want to go back on Pixabay. Obviously, you can see here, I've already searched lion head. So, you know, I'm just looking through the designs for one that I actually like. And obviously, you can see if we scroll down a bit further, wherever it is, down here, bottom left-hand corner, where my mouse is, you can see that this was the design I chose. I just like the look of this one. If I click into it here, you can see it's quite a cool design. You want to click this free download button. You can see this is a Creative Commons Zero license, which is free for commercial use. Uh, so we want to click free download. 
I've just selected this sort of size, but you can select any size. You can see it's a PNG file. Just download that. It will come up here. And then what you want to do is just open that. You just click on it and open it. And it'll open in Paint pretty much straight away. So I've already opened it in Paint. This is what it'll look like. Uh, and then I just select all here. But now there might actually be a way you, ju you can just open it straight away in Photoshop. But I've just been doing this. This is what I've kind of been doing. Um, so I've opened it in Paint. Copied that. Then paste it. So Control V. Go back to Photoshop. Control V on your keyboard. Which is a little uh, shortcut. And then you want to go here to the fourth one down on this toolbar, uh, which is the Magic One tool. There's either the Quick Selection tool or Magic One tool. Select the Magic One tool for now because I think that's going to work best on this design. You want to just click on the background, the white background, and then literally just click Delete. And then you can see that the background is now gone off that uh, image and it's just left the plain image with a transparent background. So that's what we want. I'm just going to clear that uh, pix those pixels off there by just obviously uh, choosing the rectangle marquee tool and just basically um, selecting outside of the uh, image so that then it clears those pixels. Then we want to click back on the move tool. We want to click control and T, I think it is. Yeah, control and T. And then hold shift, hold shift and drag this out because if you hold shift, It'll actually keep the image resolution, I believe. So we're just going to put it like there, something like that. I might extend it out a little bit more, and then we'll put it about there. Now, you might be thinking, how do you know this is all centered? Well, I don't know if this is all centered, but we're going to get onto that in a second. So don't worry about that. Don't worry about the fact it might not be completely centered because we're going to rectify that very soon. So as you can see, a new layer, layer has popped up for this image on the bottom right hand corner you just want to double click that and then we'll get the same layer style options we got with the text and we just want to add a stroke because obviously as you can see well as you saw in this other design we added if i uh, control and plus to zoom in again you can see there we added a stroke so that's what i'm going to do and it may makes it look pretty good to be honest when it's on the t-shirt so if I go to stroke and just select stroke there, again, color just down here, we want to just click the color palette there and select white because I feel that's going to do well on a black t-shirt. And then I don't know what my size was um, on the other one, but let's just randomly put it at something for now. Um, I think I think about, I think that might be a bit too big, but let, let's just see what the size on that one was. Let me go to this. Uh, that was 49. So we're going to do the same as that one just to keep it consistent. So we'll do stroke and we'll do 49 or as close to it as I can get because this little slide is very annoying. Oh, I nearly had it then. I nearly had it. Ah, 46. That'll do. 46 will do. I'm not going to get completely perfect. Just going to go back onto this one again. Control and minus this time to zoom out just to see whether that's sort of similar to that design there. I think it's a little bit smaller, that lion. So I'm going to go Control and T on the keyboard again, hold Shift, and then just pull that design out a bit more, and then roughly position it in the sort of central way. So there we go. You can see that that zoologist is in a slightly different position, um, but obviously that's because this design, I believe, has been centered. Although, actually, that doesn't seem like it's centered. So I'll show you on this design how to center it, because it doesn't look centered. It might be but uh, it doesn't look it. So we want to select on the second one down on this little toolbar, uh, this little rectangle tool, rectangular marquee tool, and then you just want to select that top one. And you want to select from the very top outside of the actual image all the way down to outside the other side of it. So you've selected the entire uh, image there. And then you've basically got a selection on the entire image. If you want to go back, click up here into this move tool again like we normally do. And you can see these, these little things at the top here, uh, where my mouse is at the top here. Now, there's a little, there's basically like a, a right one, a left one, and then a center one. The center one centers it. So that's what you want to do. You want to center that. And then, obviously, that centered the lion's head. You know, it's completely central now. Then you want to click down to the zoologist layer on the bottom right-hand corner. And then that'll just do the same for the zoologist layer. You can see there it actually wasn't centered. I didn't think it was. So I don't know why that's happened, but uh, obviously 
for some reason it's got uncentered. You can see that if I do the left hand one, it'll it'll go to the left hand side. Do the uh, right hand one, it'll go to the right hand side. But we want it central, so there we go. And I'm just going to repeat the process for the other design. So again, using this little rectangular tool right at the top to right at the bottom. And then we want to click the move tool. And then we're on the uh, design again, we're on the image, so the lion image. So it's going to center that one first. And you can see it just moved very, very slightly. And then we just do the zoologist. And then that moved very, very slightly again. Now that looks okay to me. Uh, obviously, it's not a perfect match. The color's off slightly uh, compared to that original one. And um, it's a few pixels, obviously. I think it's a few pixels higher. Uh, yeah, I think it might be a few pixels higher, but it wasn't a per it wasn't to get a perfect match. It was just to show you simply how I did that sort of design. Obviously, I could get a perfect match if I just did a little bit more rearranging. You know, I move this down maybe slightly or whatever, and and so forth and so on. You know, and I can just double click on that layer, go to the color again, and then just get a bit more of a of a more consistent color with that other one. But it doesn't need to be like that. It doesn't need to be perfect to be original. Uh, it was just generally just to show you kind of uh, where, you know, how to do this design. So that is basically the design done. I will show you in my next video how to upload the design, how to do keywords. Again, checking for more trademarks with the keywords, all that sort of stuff. Uh, obviously, avoiding any keyword stuffing. I don't really think that that's a great idea and what I mean well I'll elaborate with that in the next video actually I won't elaborate with that here because it's a perfect opportunity to do that in the next video so actually first of all just before I go what you want to do is you want to click this save for web option don't click save as click save for web so I'll just do this very quickly before I go and the image could not be generated likely because it is too big there is insufficient memory the image is what now, I don't know what's happened here. Anyway, something's gone wrong with my Photoshop, but I can still give you the process of how to actually, um, obviously, how to save it. So, what you want to do in the top right-hand corner, you want PNG-24. At least that's the option I've been using. And it'll basically just make the image transparent, which is what you want. You want to select transparency if, you haven't, if it isn't selected. And you also want to convert it to S... RGB. Now I'm not necessarily sure what that does, but I've heard on a lot of Photoshop tutorials um, that you want to select it. It might increase the quality or something like that. I'm not 100% sure, but that's what I always do anyway. And my designs seem, you know, my images seem pretty cool. Um, you want to make sure again that the image size is right, so the width is 4,500, height is 5,400. And then you just want to click save. I'll see if this saves now. Oh, it seems like it's going to save now. So uh, basically what you want to do is we'll come in here to, uh, I'll just put in here in videos. Uh, and then what you want to do is just create a file name like Lionhead Design or something like that. And then boom, save it. And then, well, it's saying it could not write this file because there isn't, enough scratch memory. I don't even know what that means, but basically I'll sort that out. Obviously something to do with my Photoshop, but when you save it, it will actually save for you. It's just that something's going wrong with my Photoshop at the minute. So as I say, I'll have to sort that out right now after this video. Hope you enjoyed that guys. Leave a comment if you did. Leave a like if you know you got some use out of this video and I will see you in the next one. So see you very soon guys.